Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ying Guang Zhang. I'm an assistant professor in finance at PKU, Guanghua School of Management. Today, I'm going to share a little bit about my recent research on expectation dynamics and asset pricing framework. The expectation of future outcomes is a key input for our decision making. In recent years, thanks to the work by leading scholars such as Andrzej Schleifer, Stefan Nagel, David Tesma, and Areki Mamandier, we've learned a great deal about how our diagnostic heuristic, extrapolation, fading memory, and life experiences shape our subjective expectations. In asset pricing, the traditional paradigm has been the risk-return trade-off. And the premium earned not by taking on extra systematic risk is called mispricing. As if risk aversion is the only justified behavioral trait that warrants any premium. Well, we agree that risk aversion is a fundamental trait of human beings because it is essential for our ancestors' survival. One could argue that our expectation formation processes are as fundamental as risk aversion and they are also wired by evolution, not for being accurate, but for helping us navigate the world and survive. Therefore, I believe that going against our innate nature to form expectations in a certain biased way should also be justified for earning what I called a behavioral premium. In my recent paper titled, Which Expectation? I build an expectation-based asset pricing framework that encompasses two expectation formation processes, namely sticky expectation in cash flow level and extrapolation on cash flow growth. I show that this framework can unify several well-known anomalies such as value, investment, profitability, momentum, and reversal. More importantly, the model generates unique predictions about the shape and the dynamics of the term structure of investors' expectation error. Consistent with the model's predictions, I show that a new measure of growth expectation error robustly predicts stock's future return negatively. This measure of expectation error also partly explains the value, profitability, and low investment premium. The interaction between the sticky expectation and growth extrapolation naturally generates short-term momentum and long-term reversal, which I also verified in the data. The unique and new prediction from the model is that these firm characteristics should also predict an upward sloping forecast error term structure. That is, for example, a value firm may have a very accurate current period earning forecast. But since investors may have underestimated the growth rate, the gap between actual and forecasted earnings for the next fiscal period should be positive, and this gap should be increasingly positive for longer horizons. I show that this is indeed the case. Book to market, asset growth, and profitability predict analyst expectation error term structure. Momentum, however, is an important exception. It predicts a relatively flat error term structure, which means that stickiness in cash flow level expectation offers a better explanation for momentum. The model also makes prediction about the dynamics of the error term structure. When the next period forecast becomes the current period forecast, it is no longer subject to bias in growth expectation, and these forecasts become quite accurate. However, the forecasts at all other horizons are still subject to that growth expectation error, so the model says that during an earnings announcement, the firm characteristics should predict a parallel shift in the expectation term structure, even though these characteristics predict an upward sloping error term structure. This prediction also is strongly supported by the data. This finding provides an explanation for the alpha persistence of certain strategies. Now, the contribution of this paper is not to invent any new biases or to say that all anomalies are about expectation errors. But I do bring two prominent expectation biases into the same model and show that it gives consistent predictions for many of the facts that we see. And that it is also yielding new predictions 
that other models may find difficult to generate. Therefore, I argue that it is important to deepen our understanding of the exact expectation formation processes. We know, and I show a little bit in the paper, that we still do not have a perfect expectation formation model that fits all the aspects of the data. So there's still a lot of work to be done in this field.